Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I might do a full playthrough. Let's see how things go of Light in the Dark, a solo dungeon crawl game set in the world of Pest. As far as I know, Pest is really a Euro style game. This not so much. Again, they're sharing the same theme. They're sharing, I believe, similar artwork the artwork is amazing i really like it a lot i didn't really check out pest unfortunately i more or less stumbled upon this in essen at arcona games at their booth basically and uh, why not let's let's give it a try looks interesting enough i already played it uh, at least twice now i think uh, one's quite successful the other one not so much <laughs> let's see how things go here today and also one thing i want to note is that i will give away this copy of the game to one of my patrons or channel members so i will set this up once i'm completed with my playthrough here my channel members and or patrons will be able to or one lucky winner will be able to get this copy of the game once i'm done i will take good care of it promised you <laughs> let's see how things go. In Light in the Dark, we take on the role of Courageous Blake Doctor on a quest to heal a region afflicted by the deadly plague. So ultimately what we are trying to do is we will explore quite a few of these terrain tiles. We will encounter monsters. We will stumble upon villages, sick villages, which we need to heal if we want to move over it. And ultimately, we have to find a terrain tile that shows the boss's lair, which has been shuffled into the bottom, I believe, five cards of this terrain deck here. And we need to do that, so find the boss and defeat the boss before time is running out on these three quest cards here. I shuffle those and randomly we have a starting, a middle and an end quest. You always have a starting, middle and end quest, but I believe there are three of each. So there is good variety. Uh, in respect to this game. Um, it's a little bit swingy because the difficulties of these quests are very different from card to card. I think I have a medium to difficult level difficulty here. But of course, the higher the risk, the higher the reward because um, these quests will also give us some more exp or prestige points, I believe, so victory points basically in the end. Because there is one starting tile which would only give you two of these crowns, or these prestige points, for example. So that's what we are trying to do. Before time is running out, we will find, hopefully, the boss's lair. We will fight the boss and defeat them before we are moving over this last quest. If this is basically moving off, we have automatically lost the game. Yeah, I will go through, let's say, the narrative of these quests once we get there, once we start the game, maybe. Let's have a quick look at our character here, Thress Dawning, the fighter. Not much of a fighter because he only starts the game with one strength. The game comes with four different characters that you can play and they also come with different difficulties. So I'm using one of the lower middle ones. So there's one with one crown. That's the easiest one, but also only gives you one victory point. But starts off the game with slightly higher stats. I think, no, I think that's pretty, pretty solid, actually. I mean, this is really easy, right? Five health, four movement and two strength compared to my four, three and one. Yeah, but it can be much worse. So you have some choices in how you want to, yeah, engage the lands, the monsters, the bosses and whatnot. We have a special ability here, which is this one here. This gives us a plus one when we are fighting, I believe, Crimson Bandits or so. So one enemy type that we can and will most likely encounter throughout our journeys. But apart from that, that's basically it. So we don't really have a ton of whatever ability cards and whatnot. We will find some items which will give us extra stuff to do. We will start the game with one of these herb tokens. We need those in order to heal the villagers. Right now we haven't found one. And I think with that being said, we should be pretty much good to go again. I already set up the starting terrain tile here. The game comes with four of these starting tiles. The remainder of the tiles are still shuffled in the deck. So we will find them again, most likely, at least most of them. This is already kind of 
so let's say a problematic tile because this one here would give all of our enemies a plus one in combat unfortunately not for us but there aren't any enemies on this starting tile so maybe that's a good thing i don't really remember if any of the starting tiles come with enemies i can't quite remember now um, we have one starting space uh, one starting market which we can go to in order to get an extra item and that will be definitely the first thing we are going to do and basically from here on we will then yeah roaming the lands trying to find the lair of the boss during our round basically we can take up to three turns and usually you want to take these three turns a turn always consists of a movement so we can move up to our movement speed which is currently a three then we can take an optional action this is an attack even though attack is not really optional if you are adjacent to a monster from what i understand you have to attack then we can also heal a village if we are adjacent to a village we cannot enter a sick village or move over it usually there is an item that allows you to do that we can take an item and that's what we are going to do in a second or we can pick up a herb token if there would be one on our current yeah, terrain tile which there isn't so with our very first action let's move our three spaces one two and three onto midway the market then we are taking our optional action which is to grab this token here it's basically put back to the supply we are drawing our very first item card and let's see what we get it <laughs> okay that is by far by far 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 the really most powerful item in the deck it's an ongoing ability and gives us a plus two i didn't stage the deck in any way finding this as your very first item is huge this is massive you are allowed to uh, carry two items there is a boss unfortunately when he is revealed uh, you have to discard one of your items so we better get a second one but right now we don't know which boss we are facing actually this will be randomly drawn also with, i think we have a selection of four but yeah that is a massive start but this is also our very first turn of the round let's do that again the movement that is and i think we want to move doesn't really matter to the left here is basically a dead end coming from a different location basically from the south of southern terrain tile if we ever go there but we already know that this is a blind spot and this is something that can happen throughout the game that you are finding yourself in a situation where you are kind of locked in and it seems there is even a situation where you can't really explore anymore because every every exit is blocked either by a village or by dead ends and in this case uh, the designers came up with us let's say an error tab basically with a fix what happens when you are in this kind of situation but let's hope we are not getting there so we will move one two spaces over here in order to scout for a new terrain we have to spend one of our movement points we still have one we have a movement of three so we will take the topmost tile we are not allowed to flip this tile over or rotate it in any way sorry that's what i'm going to say and here we have found an interesting one that's actually a good one so it seems we are crazy lucky so here we have molari which is a sick village here we have another herb token to pick up also great but we will also bandits we'll also have to spawn our very first enemy and there is a good pile back there are only four kind of different enemies in the deck I mean, four bosses that is so let's flip it over and these are forest giants those are not necessarily the easiest ones no i think they are pretty strong actually but they will start from here but honestly with our fire sword i'm feeling rather hopeful we will be able to take them out the card here is simply discarded it, they don't show you any kind of stats whatsoever it's only a piece of artwork and showing you which um, of these enemy tokens you have to spawn in order to find out what those forest giants bring to the table we have to refer to the yeah, table or the, the helper card here that shows um, the stats here correctly i think this is the forest giants with three life points three movement and two strength currently our strength is only one but keep in mind we have a plus two so ultimately i think we might be able to defeat them the cool thing is now we have now finished our movement and we have 
finished our movement next to a village, which means we can now immediately heal that village. Again, keep in mind, we started the game with one of these herb tokens. We are going to discard this. Then we are removing one of these tokens. There is a quest which asks you to heal a certain amount of villagers. That's not it. And maybe I promised you this, but I forgot. Let's have a quick look at our very first quest. And thematically, we just assume that we have learned about this quest in this village, huh? Shall we? So we have dire times. The growing threat from the bandits and other enemies grows each day. Find a way to get rid of them and give the villagers in this parts of Thokala a peace of mind. Thinking about Iron Maiden now for whatever reason. So we have to kill four enemies. And if we do that before time is running out. So when we are moving our time mark basically from this card to this card. And we haven't defeated four enemies until then. This quest is basically missed. Or we failed that quest. We don't get any ill effects for that. But we will not score the four victory points for those at the end of the game. If we ever make it to the normal end of the game that is. So we still have one more action left and I think we are going to move further down here or maybe even towards those herbs. Normally I would try to stay away from enemies but because again we want to score some points I think we are going closer to this exit here in order to explore or maybe again go upwards to the herbs. Again having those herbs and yeah, basically allows you to remove blocks through these sick villages here. Normally, again, I wouldn't be allowed to move over um, a sick village here, but now we have cleared it. Great job. So we are moving one, two, three spaces down here. There's nothing to do. We can't really take an optional action here, so we will more or less end our round, which means we are moving into the enemy phase. Right now, we only have an enemy. We already know that those forest giants have a movement speed of three, which means they will reach us. One, two and three they have to stop adjacent to us anyway but as soon as they are adjacent to us they will engage us in combat and that's what we're going to do rolling our very first set of dice isn't that lovely so let's move down the lego dice tower already have set the starting health for the forest giants that's a three that's shown here um, we know they have a strength of two we have a strength of three. So we are rolling both dice. The whites are ours. The black are for the enemies. We are summing these up. They're of course, black and black, white and right. We are adding our strength and then we see who's rolling higher. Relatively easily done. And I think this is already okay because our strength is, is higher by one. And we only need to tie that, by the way, the total result, which means they already have taken one point worth of damage. I take that. Let's keep rolling. Second round of combat. And by the way, there's no such thing as running away in this game. And this is a seven. They have an eight. Uh, no, they have a nine because this is now doubles. And for doubles, we are adding one point of strength. So they have nine plus two is 11. We have seven plus three. That's a 10. We have to take one point of damage. We get to choose which of these markers we are moving down. I think we can't go below one on those. And if we ever have to move below one with the health, we have lost basically our life and the game. So in this case, I think we want to reduce our health. We want to hold on to our movement right now. This is relatively similar to Betrayal on House on Hill, I like to think. But yeah, let's continue to roll. And I think this is good. Eight. Yeah, we have given them one more point of damage one more to go come on you can do this and that is great we have a six plus one because those are doubles that's definitely totally enough to defeat those guys now we see which combat reward we're getting against forest giants we are getting one strength that is truly nice so our next fight we have a plus two plus two plus four so I really like my chances here. Nice. And we have lost one point of health, but that is okay. We will remove the token here respectively. And that's already the end of the enemy phase. So we are moving into the next round. But of course, time is running away. We also have to increase our marker here. And because we have defeated our very first enemy, we are allowed to place one marker here respectively. Three more to go. And we are successful on this quest for victory points. Hooray! Now I have to think about my next movement, right? 
So we can either move upwards here to the Herbs or we can move down to Explore. And I think because it's exactly enough to bring us here, that's what I'm going to do. So one and two, we have to spend one more movement point in order to explore down here. So let's see what we get. And hmm, that isn't terrible. I like two food. We have another item waiting for us here. Yeah, I think that's basically a no-brainer. We have another enemy which I have to spawn in a second and we have another sick village. But now we are out of herbs unless we are moving up here. But let's see which enemy we are fighting. And this is a wolf pack. Wolf pack isn't really that big of a deal because they only have basically level one in all of their stats. But well, this was our very first turn of the game. There's nothing to do right now, so we have to forfeit our optional action, unfortunately. But that is okay. Now we have to make a call if we first want to pick up that item or if we first want to kill all the wolves. Having the item, of course, would help us in that fight here. But I think we want to move back up picking up those herbs. So I think that's the better deal because otherwise we would then here and then there. I think it would still... Would this be a difference? I think it wouldn't actually change a whole lot, right? No, I think not. So we are moving one, two spaces here. Now we have to forfeit our third movement point because we have to stop when we take our action. We are picking up this item here. And now we have found the planty poor poison, which we can use up to two times. And I believe we can yeah, force the enemy basically to roll only one die per combat round. That is very nice. This, I mean, against the boss, for example, that would be huge, of course. Really, really huge. I will definitely take it, but I'm also quite certain we won't be holding it until the end of the game, until we find the boss. We will place a marker cube on this topmost position. So if we use it first, we are moving it here. And then for the second time, we are moving it here. And then we will discard the poison. Nice. Let's move into the final action for this round and in theory i can game the game here a little bit because i know the wolf is moving towards me so i will only move one space here because then i'm really closer to the healing herb because the wolf will come to me and will fight me anyway right so yeah let's definitely do that we will again forfeit our optional action for this round but this is quite okay we are moving into the enemy phase right now there is only one enemy on the board normally there is a priority in which these enemies are moving but again one enemy it's not a thing the wolves will move up and will engage us in combat right away again our strength is a four now isn't that lovely and then yeah we are rolling the die they have a strength of one so let's see so that's a six plus four is ten and eight plus one is nine and they only have one health i forgot to place it here so they are immediately dead and the reward for killing off wolf pack is basically one life point back but what's more important we have defeated our second enemy and then we are moving into the third round of the game this may be quite an uneventful round but i think we still want to do that so we are moving one two three no action one two three no action uh, yes action we will pick up those healing herbs for sure for the next village to come. And then for our third turn, we are moving one, two and three. Unfortunately, we don't have any movement points left in order to explore. So we can directly move into the enemy phase. There aren't any enemies. So believe me, this will change rather soon. So the only thing left to do for this round is to move our round tracker one more space. And yes, you guessed it right. If we move in here, we will respawn all the enemies on the board next round for our first movement point we are going to explore and i'm not 100 percent sure if you are allowed to continue to move but because it's still part of your movement you simply have to spend one movement point in order to explore i think you are allowed to move ahead unfortunately my questions are unheard on the geek it seems so this is another starting tile, by the way, but it doesn't really matter. And yes, it all, but it answers my question. If there are starting tiles that show enemies, that's indeed the case. We have another item and yeah, we have more herbs, but we have to spawn two more enemies here. I will always go from top down to bottom, left to right. 
So in this case, this will be this one here first. And this is another wolf pack. I can certainly live with that. And for the second one here, another wolf pack. I really shuffled the heck out of this deck. So we might be even able to fulfill our mission right here, right there. This is nice. We still have two more movement points. One and two. I think I'm not going to pick up that item here. I can totally do that because I want to hold on to basically both of those. So that was my first action. I think should we simply engage those fellas? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? So we are moving one, two, three. That was our second action. We are not going to yeah unfortunately have to forfeit our optional action but this is quite all right we are moving one space further we are now adjacent to a monster and from what i understand now you have to stop and take the optional action to fight and that's what we are going to do we are fighting this wolf pack here so you know the drill we will pick up those dice again we still have a plus four we are only allowed to use one item i believe after a combat round so first we are rolling then we are allowed to use an item in this case that will be the fire sword of course and i think this is quite all right they get a plus one because of the doubles but yeah really no match we are healing once more wow we have defeated our third enemy already but that's also the end of the round let's also remove the token here respectively and then oh the wolf is only moving one space actually so he's not going to reach me hmm for some reason i thought they would be able to reach me no but that's not the case so they will move one space to the herbs they don't pick up or steal the herbs or the items the only thing that they can't pass are the villagers like myself so even they are afraid of the plague it seems but that's already the end of the enemy phase. Let's move the round track. And even though I'm running relatively slow, I will still engage those enemies. So we have to fight once more. Unfortunately, we no longer get the combat reward here because we are fully healed. So we can cannot spill over to other stats, unfortunately. So let's roll those dice. Oops roll that again oh oh, oh okay what did i do here mm, i think this was like this mm, that is interesting so they clearly beat me so i will have to take one damage yes that's the case okay again the game could be over basically if i'm now continuously rolling poorly like i usually do i might go down against yeah pack of wolves but let's see. No, I think we are quite all right here. Um, we have the 13 plus 200. So we have taken care of these wolves. We get our health back. So it wasn't in vain, actually. But this also means we have defeated four enemies. So we have claimed the victory points here. Hooray. So let's remove those wolves as well. We are moving for our second action onto this space. Have to forfeit our remainder of movement points we will pick up those healing herbs so we have two now okay that's pretty huge actually that's really huge but now we have our final turn of the game and because we can move up here i have to rearrange the board now the map a little bit because you see i'm already <laughs> this can be quite a table arc actually but i think let's do that because we can explore and we want to explore right that's the idea on the other hand, hmm, that's a good point now. If I now exp now we will spawn something anyway, right? So this wouldn't change a thing. But yes, that is a thing because all those spaces will now get monsters. And the next set of monsters won't be wolf packs because we have fought them all as far as you know, could be still one more in there. I haven't counted it. So we will face something more harsh. So I mean that's maybe a reason not to do that. No, let's not do that. We are moving one, two, three. Again, we can move on to this. We don't have any more movement points left to explore, but that's basically the end of the round. There are no monsters, so we can immediately or directly skip that. But of course, we are spawning new enemies now. And again, I'm doing this left to right, top to bottom. So we are starting here on this one here again. So this is, oh, cultists. I think these are the toughest monsters in the game. But I think there are only one card in the deck. Next one, uh, Crimson Bandits. These are the one where we get a plus one again. So I'm not complaining here, but we may have to fight them rather sooner than later. Down here, 
we are seeing some more forest giants and there is one more down here actually and now we see oh there is still one wolf pack inside okay and we will shuffle the deck anyway so again they could come back anytime we really reveal those cards and we are discarding them and if we need more enemies we are simply oops we are simply drawing them again okay those were four more monsters they're not moving this round because again movement happens before we are respawning things and then we are moving into the next round of the game so for our first movement action we are going to explore let's see what we get so far we haven't run into a dead end i like that oh we can even oh that's that's interesting we can even move back to our starting card and move over here this is rather rare actually so the map layout so far fingers crossed is not bad so we have more items here and there is our next quest is asking for items so let's see we will spawn more healing herbs but we have another enemy here but no surprise these are also crimson bandits again we get a plus one against them anyway we still have movement points left but i think i want to get away from these cultists here they have a strength of three indeed and three health as well so yeah we have movement points left so we are moving over here we have to stop next to those bandits we have to fight them they have two life points so they start off here they have a plus one a uh, plus two but we get a plus one against them so in total if we're using our fire sword we have a plus five that is pretty massive actually against those guys and yeah this is certainly enough for the first round of combat i take it let's do that again and yeah oof, we even get a plus one here on those double so wow these crimson bandits are out of here and these guys give us movement okay that is rather huge so let's remove those dudes here um we will have to take our second action and there is a point actually picking up this uh, more healing herbs is great i think there is no limit in respect to how many healing herbs we can carry could be wrong though but let's do that one and two plus our second action we will pick up those healing herbs we still have one more action left and in theory we could move one two three spaces over here to continue to explore again we have to get to the bottom five terrain tiles in order to find the boss and honestly the sooner we find the boss the better because if we are coming to those spaces the strength of all our monsters will increase first by one and then to a plus two this can be pretty harsh especially against the bosses later on we might have to move back sooner or later but right now i'm feeling lucky we are moving on to three space oh we have four spaces now indeed because we have defeated the crimson bands now i think this is rather okay so we will use our last movement points oh no and what did i tell you we just ran into a dead end are you kidding me we will still bring out more stuff we will fully populate the terrain tile here so we know what to expect here is another item here is an enemy the enemy will not move at all because there is no path to us but we will still spawn it and these are more crimson bandits i like crimson bandits because they give us speed and we get a plus oh no but oh yeah <laughs> these guys get a plus three as long as they're on this tile so also not too easy here but i think think yeah this was our last movement point so we are kind of stuck here and we are moving into the enemy phase and now for the first time we have to look at the priority in respect to how they're activated we will start with cultist forest giants then the crimson bandits and last but not least the wolf pack um, again they're moving four spaces one two three and four four uh, they're almost here actually we only have one cultist on the board so this is all right then we are moving the forest giants here i'm not sure what is shorter actually but i will play it mean against myself i will move those guys here because i will move down here anyway right to make things a little bit more interesting 
We only have one of those, then it's the Crimson Bandits. They will move two spaces. Unfortunately, they can only move one space. So here in this case, the Cultists are blocking the space and there can be only one token each, at least in respect to monsters. And last but not least, those Wolves, yeah, I think they simply have to move up here. And as I mentioned, because these guys do not have a path to me, they will not move at all. Final round of the first quest card, but again, that is okay because we already have achieved it. So I think we have to start moving south now, right? I'm really hoping that this is not another dead end here, actually. One, two, three, and four. Keep in mind, we have four movement points. There is nothing to do for now. Yeah, I'm not on the quest yet. And I will read this quest once I'm there. So this was our first action, second action, one, two, three three and four back basically to where we started the game midway market now we are moving into the third action one two three we will explore let's see what we get and okay we find a way up to those crimson bandits actually mm, yeah these this is no no i think this this is a path right this is a path but the path is currently blocked indeed so we have to move it here we have another healing herb not terrible not terrible we find another item mm -hmm. question is do we want to i think we want to but now we have to really go through a hell of a lot of these things so i think these are on the same level so i will start here and in the meantime we have to actually reshuffle the deck already are you kidding me i should have done that a long time ago so first here as i said these are wolves okay then this one here top down left to right oh, it doesn't matter i will do this one here crimson bandits that is rather nice and last but not least we have another wolf pack okay that is not too terrible actually those are discarded and yeah this was the very oh no we can still take an action and we can take an action to basically heal this village. And again, I think this is a pass, right? Otherwise, we can't move in there. So if we would open this one up, oh, and only the Crimson Bandits would move. I think this is okay. So we are spending one of our herbs to heal this village. Unfortunately, we are not getting anything. Again, there is a quest that gives us stuff if we're healing this. And yeah, that's the end of our round end of our movement end of our actions we are moving into the enemy phase again we will start with those cultists they will move one two three four spaces they're really rather fast actually then we have the forest giant one two and three then it's the crimson bandits we get to choose the order of things one and two one and two and i think one and two they will definitely engage us right away i believe i think we will not wait for the other monsters to activate not sure if this is really could make a difference in respect to movement but i will fight them right away but again our bonus is quite all right here um, again plus four plus five indeed so let's see um that is okay even though they get a plus one on their doubles yeah it's not enough i mean we have plus five right so that is okay second round of combat yes not a problem at all and wow again we are getting one more movement point movement is really key in this game okay that isn't terrible at all <laughs> those guys are out we still have to move the wolves i believe yeah i think these guys will move up here and these wolves will move one space each. Yeah, this is another dead end here. I think we can move this space. I'm really hoping I'm interpreting the map here accordingly. Then we are finally leaving our very first quest card here. Now we are coming to our middle quest, which says resourceful. To prove your resourcefulness to the Empire Council, use the equipment you find along the way to the rest of your abilities. Collect four items, which means we have to pick them up basically. The thing is we have two items right now and I really still like my Plantical Purge in actual, so we may have to discard a lot of these items, but it might still be worth it. So we are placing another cube here just to prepare ourselves. 
Again, it's another six points. Six points is not nothing. The last one would give us eight, but we will come to that rather sooner than later. And then we will take our next turn of the game. But honestly, originally, I really thought to play this to the bitter end. But honestly, I think I already spent some time here explaining you some of the mechanics, which are relatively easy, of course. And... As of the second episode, I really should be able to speed things up quite dramatically. So I should be able to complete the playthrough in the second episode one way or the other. So I can still lose it. Yes, right now things are looking pretty good. I mean, drawing this sword as your very first item is incredibly lucky. Never happened to me. So this already changed the game quite a bit. And I think there is a way how you can stage things a little bit. If you say this is too powerful, I will shuffle this basically not in the first three cards of the item deck. That is something that you can do. And there are some variants in the game how you can tweak some of the randomness from what I understand. Let's see. There are some things, right? Variants. Yeah, choose your destiny, for example. You can, instead of drawing quest cards, for example, you can yeah, stage them accordingly. You can also go full campaign, where you start with very easy part, for example. You can go for the easy difficulty level, then we go to the next one, we go with the next higher one, for example. So there are some ways how you can tweak this game anyway. But I will take it, I'm okay. Uh, it's definitely more fun to watch me succeeding in a game rather than always go. <laughs> I will just think of my latest session of World of Warcraft. The board game really didn't go my way. Spoilers here. But yeah, let me know what you think. And again, once I'm completed my playthrough here, I will give it away to one of my patrons or channel members, depending on who the lucky winner will be. I will have to think about how I will do that. But again, it leaves all the others some time to maybe reconsider if they want to join me on Patreon or yeah, whatever, join me directly on YouTube. Both of these things count. And again, before I forget, huge shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. Also channel members, of course. So if you want to join me, support me, then go to Patreon, join me on YouTube. There is a little thanks button below the video. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. This also greatly helps the channel and I really very much appreciate that. And yeah, with that being said, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.